Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video, doing a say forecast, today's first video. So as uh, so was on a Wednesday, we're having a look at the weather for uh, the next week, the same days uh, for Europe. And uh, yeah, I should get on for you uh, very shortly. Uh, we'll extend out for the next four weeks, the CFSB2 as well. And I think it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, watch. These uh, USA forecasts, along with European outlooks on a Thursday, are YouTube exclusives. So uh, if you would like to um, know when uh, we're releasing these on a Wednesday on YouTube, then you will need to subscribe to the channel and click all notifications. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. So I'm uh, going to be live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock. going to live stream the 10 to 14 day uh, video update uh, for uh, for um, the UK and Northern Europe as well. So that's going to be coming up from 6 o'clock. Have our live stream, see how we're all doing. And uh, I think it'll be quite a biggish stream, probably, uh, that one, because there's a lot of interesting charts around at the moment. Dare I say, it may be even a possibility of a few flakes of snow uh, sometime early in December. But we shall have a look at that, anyway, on uh, the live stream uh, from 6 o'clock tonight. Straight after the live stream, and I do mean literally straight after, one minute after the live stream ends, I'll um, uh, make the uh, Christmas, latest Christmas update, uh, public. So uh, you'll be able to, so just hang around the channel. Uh, and around one minute after the live stream, around one minute past seven, uh, you'll be able to have a watch of a Christmas update. But I'm going to record shortly and upload and get ready uh, to release just after the uh, live stream. So it's going to be a busy day, guys. It's another epic day. I hope you enjoy the content at the moment. If you are enjoying it, please click like on the videos and uh, let us know in the comments what you think. And as I say, make sure you're subbed to the channel. Right, let's go on with USA forecasting. So we're going to begin in the tropical Atlantic. So, I mean, we're 25th of November now. You'd expect the hurricane season to be pretty much over. Things have turned quieter over the past week to 10 days. But uh, we've still got a disturbance area, actually. We've still got this disturbance area just here. Or we're still getting disturbance areas. And that's another one of them, that yellow X uh, just there. That is disturbance one with a 10% uh, chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours and a 5% chance in the next five days. They say with this, uh, a low pressure area located along a frontal system more than 400 miles southeast of Bermuda is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms, mainly east of its center. The low is expected to interact with an upper level trough later today detach from the front by Thursday and then possibly acquire subtropical characteristics on Friday while it moves southwards over warmer waters. Uh, for more information on this system, uh, see high seas forecast issued by the National Weather Service. Uh, so that's just one to watch. It might develop into something. It might not. So we'll have to wait and see. This is how uh, the latest GFS is forecasting things in the tropical Atlantic over the uh, over the next um, couple of weeks. So uh, I mean, this is like the coast of uh, Africa just here. This is the coast of America just here. That's Florida, of course. This is the Caribbean. Gulf of Mexico, uh, Mexico itself through there, for example. Right, uh, let's run through then. So red, of course, is high pressure, blue is low pressure. So this is like that disturbance area just here, I think. That's a disturbance area just there. So let's see whether that develops into anything or not. So, I mean, it just sort of seems to meander around, doesn't it? So uh, this is up to Saturday, just meandering around, not really going anywhere all that fast on this particular GFS run. Otherwise, again, not all that much happening through the tropics. So we are into a quieter period now. We're at the end of the season, but we still cannot rule out the chance that something could pop off even into December. There's another system developing just there. We're up to 300 hours, 7th of December. There's some sort of system developing uh, just there. Uh, so that might be some sort of tropical uh, development um, again. Also, that's going to be quite a significant feature, actually. That could be a tropical storm uh, just there. Uh, again, otherwise, not all that much going on. So it looks as though things are becoming quieter now. I have to say, it does look as though things are winding down finally on this, uh, on this tremendous uh, hurricane and tropical storm season. But then again, in, in the 2005 uh, season, we, we had like a, at least a tropical storm, it might be a hurricane, uh, like it, at the end of December and into early January of 2006, which was kind of like a leftover legacy of the 2005 
hurricane season, which, which you know, was, was a very, very big season uh, as well. So we can't rule out the chance of more developments through December. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I think, like, the, the main part of the season obviously now is over, but we may get some late starters. I so, certainly wouldn't rule it out, given how, uh, how tremendously active this season has been. Uh, right, let's look at things more widely across America then. So these are the 500 bit of our height only flow charts for the next uh, week, 10 days from the Penn State University. And uh, we've got the ECMWF on the left and the GFS is on the right. So 500 millibars is an area in the actual high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates extrapolate high pressure blue to low pressure. So you can see it with the ECM, we've got high pressure uh, across Northern America and up into Canada. That is blocking. We've got blocking uh, with the ECM uh, within the high latitudes. And uh, this is the same 10-day time frame, of course. This is going to take around the 5th of December. And a trough of low pressure looks like it's digging in uh, across the east and the northeast. So that's going to have cold air within it. That trough will be pulling in cold air from Canada with the jet stream uh, doing something uh, a little bit like that. So, uh, so yeah, it looks like pulling down cold air into northern east parts of America in the 7 to 10 day time frame. Maybe even a little bit of a northeast uh, possible here with snow, like in the northeast and in the east. So, GFS is very similar. Uh, again, it's got the high, uh, high latitude uh, blocking uh, up, up to the north of the states and into Canada. And then the trough low pressure into the east of America and the northeast. Probably not quite as deep with the trial, probably not quite as intense with it, so probably not putting down quite as much cold air into the east and the northeast of uh, America and Canada. Nevertheless, they're both very similar, they are both very, very similar. And uh, with a trough through here, let's change the colour again. So with a trough through here and here, and then there and there, you would expect, like on both scenarios, some level of cold to be pulling down into like the Midwest and over towards the east and the northeast uh, of the states. Uh, these are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. Uh, so looking at Chicago today. So red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Chicago. We're starting off pretty mild at the moment. Um, going to stay mild really through to around the middle of next week. Then we get a drop in the temperature. That is the trough of low pressure, I think, plunging through the Midwest and over into the east. So this period, like through the first um, day to five days of, uh, of um, December could be cold through this period just here. And then later on into the second week of December, it looks like we've got a recovery in the temperature uh, beginning to uh, take place. But that might be under anticyclonic conditions, under high pressure conditions, in which case it will probably still be pretty cold on the surface. Um, uh, Precipitation-wise, so a uh, bit of rain to come over the next day or so. Then a drier slot just there. And then as the temperature drops around the turn of the month, um, there's more precipitation. That could be snow, of course, as the temperature does a little bit of a plummet. And then after that, as we go further on through the first week of December into the second week of December, it just looks as though there's, there's a few precipitation spikes there, but largely dry. So that's why I would guess that after the cold plunge, there's probably going to be some higher pressure, maybe. Uh, as we go to the end of the first week of December and in the second week of December, in which case, even if the upper air temperatures lift up, it is still likely to be cold and frosty um, down on the surface. Temperature anomalies uh, from the 25th of uh, November to the 3rd of December look like that. Colder than average out in the west, milder than average in the north and the east. Remember, the cold plunge uh, doesn't really come into the north and northeast until the beginning of December. So uh, I would expect these charts are going to trend colder um, over the next few days, particularly through the Midwest and over towards the northeast, possibly some of these eastern seaboard areas as well. But I would think particularly like the Midwest and over towards the northeast, I would expect that area to start trending colder colder in uh, in the coming days um as we get you know more 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 of the days of early december into the uh, uh into the time frame uh, precipitation anomalies from the 25th of november to 3rd of december dry in the north and in the west looks a little bit more unsettled from the from the midwest uh over towards the east some of these southern uh coastal gold states as well looking um a little bit on the wetter side 
Right, so that's the current situation uh, across America today uh, from the GFS. So we've got a ridge over on the east coast of the uh, of the states. We're pulling up like a very mild southerly wind up this eastern side. Bit of cold air is digging into the northwest from the Pacific, as you would tend to expect. And then there's an area of low pressure here through these sort of uh, midwestern states. Uh, it's pretty mild across many parts of the state. It's a little bit colder up to the very far northwest. That's often the case. That's coming in off the Pacific Ocean. Uh, otherwise, though, most parts of America are looking pretty mild, especially the southern and eastern states and southeastern states. Uh, really, really mild uh, through there. You see all of the cold air is forced a long way back into, like, the central part of uh, Canada. Uh, that's where the coldest of the air has been forced back to. So, so yeah, pretty mild across many parts of the states uh, at the moment. Uh, bring through to tomorrow, very little change, and then into Friday, again, we see very little change, some colder air is trying to dig in from Canada, but basically most parts of the states are still mild uh, up to the end of the week, particularly so on this eastern and uh, southeastern side, so uh, so yeah, very little change as we go through the end of the week and into the weekend with a largely milder than ever we've seen. Now, as we go further on into the weekend, we begin to get this ridge starting to get going up towards the northwest up here. And um, so that develops a corresponding trough of low pressure through these Midwestern states. And it's between the ridge and the trough that we're starting to pull in some colder air from the north. So by around Sunday, we're just going to get the first push of colder air from Canada into some of those central uh, northern states. By Monday, that area of low pressure developed into a very significant feature. That be taking heavy rain through the Midwest and over towards the east. And uh, cold air digging in on the northern side and on the uh, western side of that area of low pressure from Canada will start to turn some of that rain to snow, I think, through through the Midwest um, during uh, the early part of next week. There's the upper air temperature showing cold air is surging southwards through the Midwest uh, from Canada. Uh, at the same time, it's getting milder but out towards the northwest, actually. So, again, that's one of the ways that weather balances itself out. And it's still pretty mild uh, over on the eastern uh, side as well at this point. But then that low pressure, that trough carries on pushing through to the east, uh, to the east coast. And it begins to pull colder air, uh, you know, eastwards with it. So, so, yeah, heavy rain, like, on the eastern side of the area of low pressure, turning readily to snow uh, across uh, across the western side uh, of the area, or on the west side of the area of low pressure, through the Midwest, but perhaps by the middle of next week, increasingly over towards uh, the east. That's how things look by Wednesday. So, another area of low pressure looks like it's forming around the Great Lakes uh, by then. Again, very cold air uh, on the east side of that area of low pressure. Still pretty mild on the, on the um, uh, very cold air on the west side of the area of low pressure, I should say. Still pretty mild on the eastern side of the area of low pressure. So it does take a while to push that cold air right way through towards the east coast. It looks like generally in the Midwest, the, up to middle of next week, things are pretty cold. There's the upper air temperature showing another surge of cold air from Canada, pushing down into the Midwest. At the same time, it's not particularly cold over on on the eastern coast, uh, on the eastern side. Uh, out in the west, again, quite a bit of dry weather with a ridge of high pressure and relatively mild across those western states. Now, as we go into the second half of next week, that trough of low pressure then moves up towards uh, Newfoundland and that sort of area, Nova Scotia, and that allows colder air to finally dig into those uh, eastern and uh, northeastern parts of America. So the cold air does eventually get there, but it takes until like the uh, end of uh, next week to move the cold air out of the Midwest and into uh, the east. Uh, then we sort of start going anti-cyclone, so there's going to be a lot of dry weather around by the time we get through to the first weekend of December. Quite a bit of dry weather under this area of high pressure, but it will be pretty cold and frosty. Uh, we're beyond day 10 now, another surge of cold air with this area of low pressure just here moving back out of Canada. Again, that pushes through those Midwestern and Eastern states uh, as well. So the cold shots really are coming now into northern and uh, sort of Midwestern, northern and northeastern states. This is the 9th of December, a long way out, but there's another push of cold air out of Canada into the north and into the northeast. Probably nothing more than you would expect, though, at this time of year. There's nothing abnormally cold going on here, but you, I mean, you would expect it to be pretty cold for northern uh, America, northeast America, uh, in early December. So it's probably not at all that abnormal. Probably, uh, probably about average. But um, but yeah, cold shots from Canada into northern and east part states. At the same time, though, these central states and out towards the west looking generally uh, on the milder side uh, throughout much of the period. That's as far as we get to with the GFS to uh, Friday the 11th of December. This is how the ECM is looking. 
The euro has high pressure just off the uh, east coast of America uh, today, drawing up southerly winds through the east and into Midwest. It's a little bit cooler uh, out in the northwest. Into uh, the end of week and through weekend, generally it's quite a mild scene again uh, across many parts of states with this ridge extending through the central states in particular. All the cold air is uh, kept at bay up into Canada until we get through to the early part of next week when we get this big area of low pressure developing uh, through through the Midwest, so we've got two areas of low pressure there. Actually, we've got one just here, we've got another just there. Of course, on the uh, on the east side of the low, we're drawing up sunny winds. On the western side of the low, uh, we're drawing now colder northern winds. And there is a ridge that's developing out in uh, the northwest as well, uh, of course. So what happens with this is that a very significant winter storm gets going by Tuesday. This is deeper with the area of low pressure by Tuesday um, over the uh, midwest of the Great Lakes. So uh, 985 millibars, that's deeper with the ECM than the GFS is showing. So, so potentially to pull down colder air from the north with this. Um, you know, got a bigger gradient, so that will force colder air out of Canada on the uh, western side of the area of low pressure. That could be a bit of a blizzard, actually, uh, around the uh, Great Lakes and through the Midwest. There could be blizzards there. At the same time, though, still mild up the eastern seaboard, so uh, that's going to be heavy rain, of course, on the um, eastern side of the low pressure, but on the west side, that could be a little bit of a blizzard. Uh, moving through the Midwest and out towards the northwest, it looks like um, a great place it looks like generally still under quite a bit of high pressure as the upper air temperatures notice how uh, the upper air temperatures are colder through the early part of next week than the gfs shows um that's because we've got a bigger grade it's a, it's a deeper area of low pressure it's a winter storm really that and uh, and yeah so there's greater potential for snow of course through the midwest through the uh through through the early part of next week but still very mild on this eastern side uh, of america and mild out through the western course then that area of low pressure sort of sticks around the Great Lakes as we go through into uh, Wednesday, bringing further uh, snow through both Midwestern areas. And it's getting colder over towards the east side of America as well. So these westerly winds are pushing colder air over towards the east side. So the, the ECM is so much colder than the GFS actually through the middle of next week. And this would turn rain to snow right the way up the east coast of America, right way up the eastern seaboard through the middle of next week. Proper sort of uh, northeaster almost. Uh, second half of next week, again, we've got this trough of low pressure through the uh, Midwest. So still looking pretty cold, even into the second half of next week. Always milder out in the West. But yeah, the upper air temperatures show that particularly around the Midwest, up towards the Great Lakes, so sort of areas, it does look cold and potentially still quite snowy. The southeast of America and up the eastern seaboard, it's it's milder through there. It's becoming milder again. And out in the West, it remains as it has been all the way along. Uh, a lot milder. That area of low pressure then pushes over towards the east coast of America as we go into the first week of September. So again, this is going to pull another shot of cold air out of Canada onto the east coast. So again, it's so much colder. The east is so much colder compared to the GFS today. Um, and, and we're pushing those milder upper air temperatures out into the Atlantic there by Saturday the 5th of December. So this could be bringing more rain uh, to snow uh, from the Midwest into the east coast of America. Um, yeah, it could be turning uh, really quite snowy. Again, hints of a bit of a northeaster, dry and milder out in uh, the west of the states. That's as far as we get to with, with the ECM up to day 10. So definitely out of the two, the ECM is colder and snowier uh, for, for next week and into the first weekend of uh, December. So there's V2 finally. So these are 500 millibar heights breaking down into wheat periods. The first wheat period takes from 24 to the 30th of November. The coming week has quite a bit of high pressure through these northern states. The low pressure with the cold air is back up into Canada. So for much of this week, the cold air is kept at bay by uh, that ridge. As we go through into week two, which is the first of December, December, the ridge pulls uh, pulls um, towards the west side of America, and that could allow colder air to dig in from the north into the these eastern and northeastern states uh, through week two, first week of December. Week three uh, is the 8th to the 14th of December. Again, a ridge out to the west and off the east coast. Again, the jet stream could be doing something like that. So it could suggest a trough from Canada extending through the Midwest into the east of America that might contain some colder air uh, with it. And then week four is the 15th, 21st of December, when again, we have a ridge extending through many parts of America, low pressures up to the north. Jet stream is pushing northwards as well. But CFS are looking quite mild 
zone, actually, uh, through early December compared to the model output that we've just been looking at, the shorter range model output. So CFSV2 for the temperature anomaly for week ahead, forecasting a largely uh, mild average week for most parts uh, of the states. Week 2, uh, which is the 1st of December, December, again looking very mild for many northern parts of America. I'm not sure about that compared to particularly the ECMWF, uh, which is also a lot colder through that first week of December. It is cold and average down across these southern states, but I think the CFS is overdoing the warmth there. Uh, for the first week of December. Week 3 also looking very, very mild uh, indeed with the uh, CFS. And week 4 also is another very mild week if CFS is right. That's the 15th, 21st December. I think those temperature anomalies are overdone though. I think it's overdoing it uh, for the first week of uh, December. I think the north, sort of Midwest, northern states, northeast states could well be a lot colder than that through that uh, first week of December. Uh, precipitation anomalies, uh, finally, so uh, week 1, 24 to 30th November, driving average is northern states, wet and average through uh, the southern states. Week three, uh, week 2, temperature anomaly, which is the 1st to the 7th of December, first week of December. A little bit wet and average up the east coast, again, largely driving average through, through many parts of the states uh, there. Week 3, uh, which is the 8th to 14th December, again, that looks pretty dry for most parts of America. And then week 4, which is the 15th to 21st of December, dry and average through the southern and eastern states, perhaps going a little bit more unsettled in the northern states. So, uh, I only think the CFS overdoing the temperature there. I think, like, the, the GFS and the ECM probably on the, on, on the money here, which is that we are going to get some colder shots into the Midwest and into the east and the northeast uh, through the course of next week. The question is, how cold will it get? How much snow will there be? Um, out of the two, the ECM, the Euro definitely looks for colder and snowier of the two through next week and into the last weekend of December. So, that'll be something to watch. But I think the CFS is off on a bit of a tangent there. And is going too mild. We shall see, though. Uh, right, so that's it for the USA forecast for this week. We'll do it all over again uh, next week. We're going to be back at six o'clock with uh, our live stream uh, for the ten to you know live stream ten to fourteen day update for the UK and for Northern Europe as well. That'll be from six. So I think it'll be quite a big stream tonight. So uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, and uh, we'll do that. You have a look at it. I'll do it. Um, just after that, around one minute after the uh, after the um, live stream, I'll uh, I'll uh, release the Christmas update, which I think is update number ten uh, for Christmas. So that's gonna be an interesting. What straight after the live stream? So USA forecast. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.